Okay, g'day folks. Welcome to another assembly tutorial. Uh, I was going to do more SSE stuff, but uh, I've decided to take a little detour for the time being, so we'll do a bit of SSE at the end, just incidentally, but we're going to look at something really interesting today, and that's structures. Okay, so pretty much structures in Massim are the same as their C++ counterparts. Uh, they're just a way to group variables together. And the syntax for creating a structure is pretty basic as well. So, yeah, here's an example of it just here. We've got amazing structure, struct. Uh, X is a define a word, and it's uninitialized. Y is define a word, and that's uninitialized also. And then you finish up with uh, the, the structure name, which is amazing structure here, and end S, short for end structure. So this one defines a structure with two words, one called X and uh, one word called Y. Uh, you can include default values instead of the question mark uh, in your element definitions. So just here we've got the same structure as before, only this version here. Uh, this is a prototype, by the way, this, this structure thing here, or this is a, a definition of a structure. This is not an instance of the structure. But uh, if we include these um, initial values in our uh, elements of the definition of the structure, then those will be the initial values for any subsequent structures that we make, unless we override them. Uh, any instances of the structure that we make, I say. Okay, so you can define a structure anywhere that's convenient. It needn't be inside a segment. And the only real limitation is that it must be defined before it's used. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good. You've got to define it before you use it. Oh, I should say also that uh, if you like, if you prefer, you can put struct with a T here, S-T-R-U-C-T, same as uh, C++. Yeah, I just try to be cool and take the T off. Anyway, uh, once defined, you can create an instance, and here we're creating an instance of the amazing structure defined on the previous slides, and uh, this instance is called STR. So this sort of thing here, uh, the creating of instances, would usually be in your uh, data segment. So the syntax for creating an instance is uh, the name of the instance, then the structure name, and that's followed by curly braces. And uh, inside these curly braces, uh, you put the values that you want to override, the uh, original uh, definition. Uh, what, what would you say? Yeah, if you want to override the original elements definition from the uh, structure prototype, then you can put them in, in, in the curly braces. And they can be triangle braces as well. Uh, so this first one just here is going to use whatever the default values for the X and Y was. If we just go back, uh, 45 and 0. So X is going to be set to 45 and Y is going to be set to 0. Uh, in this next one down here, STR, amazing structure. And then in my curly brackets, I've got 29 and 83. Uh, this would define STR as an instance of amazing structure with X equal to 29 and y equal to 83. Very cool. Uh, if you don't want to override all of the values, like some of the values you want to leave to the uh, uh, definition, the, the, the defaults in the uh, structures definition, uh, you can just leave a blank field. So right here I've got uh, str amazing structure and then I've just got a comma. So the, the x value here is blank and Masson will use the uh, default value from the structures prototype. I have, however, overridden uh, y just here. So uh, y would be overridden to 83, and uh, strx would be whatever the structure had defined. Fair enough. Okay, so strx and stry, uh, once you've defined them, that is, in your data segment, and once you've defined an instance of a structure, str.x and str.y are perfectly normal memory operands. So it's basically the same syntax as um, C. You've got the structure's name, or the instance's name, which is str in our case, and then dot and whatever parameter you want to access. So str.x, yeah, you could move something into str.x with this line, mov word ptr str.x, and then 234. Uh, or you could move something into y, str.y, with much the same thing. Uh, do note though, 
Uh, yeah, as always, you can't use two memory operands in a single mod, or any instruction for that matter. So this line here is illegal, and you'd have to do it in two steps. Something like mov ax word ptr str x, and then move that from ax into y. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so what is a structure really? This is where we start to get into some interesting stuff, actually. Uh, when you use a structure, you're, you're really just using immediate values to reference uh, offsets. And the structure name itself, uh, amazing structure in our case, in our example, um, actually means the size of the structure. So our structure had two words. Um, mov RAX, amazing structure, is going to move four into RAX. Pretty weird. That's what it's going to do, though. And the elements of the structure are the offsets within the structure. So um, X was an element in the structure. It's a capital here. Sorry about that. It's meant to be lowercase. I think we defined it as lowercase. Oh, no, who cares? It's, a, it's just an example. But um, amazingstructure.x was the first word. And that's going to correspond to zero. So if we say mov rax amazingstructure.x, Massim is going to translate that amazing structure dot x just there to zero before the program is assembled. Likewise, rax amazing structure dot y was um, the second word. We know words are two bytes, so that's going to be the same as mov rax two by the time the program is assembled. Um, so therefore, actually, something like um, mov amazing structure dot x and then amazing structure dot y as the second parameter doesn't make any sense at all since that would be saying um, mov 0 2 and uh, we can't change the value of a constant um, this is this is using the amazing structure uh, structures name just here this is not an instance uh, yeah don't don't get confused I think maybe I jumped into this stuff too quick but um, amazing structure here is the structures name not an instance. If you say mov rax um, and then instance name dot x, then it's going to read whatever the value of x is for that instance. Anyway, structure pointers. Uh, if rcx contains the address of a structure instance, we can read the elements like this. Uh, mov ax. So here's an example of moving from um, an amazing structure pointer, which is stored in rcx as a perfectly normal 64-bit uh, pointer. Uh, moving that x value into ax, and the second example here is moving the y value. And all you've pretty much got to do is normal square brackets or word pointer, and then the uh, you know pointer in square brackets. But then you put dot and the structure's name, and then dot x. So if we just had um, word ptr rcx dot x, uh, Massim doesn't know what the x is. We have to say that the x is part of amazing structure. Uh, that way it sort of casts RCX, or it sort of thinks about RCX as pointing to an amazing structure, and it figures out the um, the offset from the uh, beginning of the structure, and it just works everything out. So uh, basically all it's going to do is for this one here, RCX amazing structure dot X, it's going to add nothing to RCX, and for this one down here, it's going to say, oh, okay, he means RCX plus 2. So it's just going to move... Um, mov ax word ptr rcx plus 2. That's all that the structure means. Amazing structure dot y just means plus 2. Uh, okay, you have to specify the structure after the point. Yeah, we said that. It's far more practical to pass structures as parameters to their functions instead. Yeah. Uh, C++ has a funny way of um, passing structures not as a reference but, but as their actual values. Uh, it'll copy the values to the uh, registers and the stack, and it'll pass them. But uh, it's actually more practical in in assembly and in C++ for that matter. Uh, it's more practical to pass structures usually um, by their address. Pass them as parameters. It is. So you put them in, uh, you know, RCX, and. Uh, Put the uh, pointer in RCX and, and pass it like that. Okay, so data packing. Here we go. This is this is where things really get interesting as well. Um, and this is this is what we're going to have a, a little example at the end. I'm going to do some more coding. It feels like 
such a long time since I did any coding in one of these tutorials, but we'll do some more coding at the end. A little example of pretty much exactly this. Um, so assembly doesn't pack elements into a structure the same as C++ by default. Uh, here we can see at the top uh, how assembly will pack this structure called patient. And underneath that we can see how C++ will pack the very same definition, or pretty much the same definition. So we've got um, height is a byte, assembly is going to put it at zero, and C++ is going to put it at zero. Weight is also a byte, assembly is going to put that straight after the first byte, that's going to be at one, and C++ is going to do exactly the same thing. Then on uh, ID, which is a quad word, assembly is going to put it at two, but uh, C++ is going to naturally align it to eight. And this is where the, the, the trouble starts. If we just define things in a, an assembly structure and a C++ structure, um, the elements are going to be naturally aligned in a C++ structure, and they're not aligned at all, or they're aligned to one byte in a, an assembly structure. So short MTY just here is going to be at uh, byte number 16, an offset of byte number 16 from the beginning of the structure in C++. Whereas in assembly, the very same MTY is going to be at 10, byte number 10. And then of course we've got uh, fundal, which is a real 8. It's going to be at byte 12 in assembly, and it's going to be at byte 24 in C. So you can see that um, for a start, um, naturally aligning data makes things much larger. So this structure down here, the C++ structure, is twice the size of the assembly structure. Uh, actually, it's not. That's going to be uh, up to 32, and this one's going to be up to 20. It's going to be 20 bytes. This one's going to be 32. So it's you know it's, it's bigger. Anyway, uh, so we need <laughs> yeah we need C++ and assembly to um, actually pack their data the same. We'll see why in a second, but um, you actually have to define structures in both the languages to get them to play along. So we need them to pack the data exactly the same, and we do that with the pragma directive. Um, yeah, surround your C++ structure with pragma pack push one. <laughs> Sorry, it's just such a snappy phrase, pragma pack push one. And uh, that way it's going to pack all of the data elements to uh, one byte, which is exactly the same as the way that assembly packs them. And uh, then, we, when, then, then, then we can use them in both languages. Uh, and Oh, sorry, the pragma pack push one just here pushes the uh, original value for the uh, packing of structures uh, to the, what would you call it, pre, pre, -po pre processor stack. And uh, it sets the, the current value to one. And then at the end, we want to restore whatever the original value was. So we say pragma pack pop. That was the um, naturally aligning thing. You know, we, we pop it again so that um, subsequent, subsequent structures. <laughs> defined in C plus plus will have natural alignment. Gosh, this is getting confusing. No decal <laughs> No decal spec. Oh that's it's such a good word. Decal spec. It's just fantastic. Um no decal spec align one. Uh in the declaration of a structure refers to the alignment of instances, not the padding between elements. Yes. Um if we just put at the top of this decal spec align one uh struct patient it's not going to align the members inside a patient instance to one. It's going to um, just align any instances of patient to one, which is no alignment at all, really. So, yeah, that's good. Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing. Uh, okay, so to have C++ and assembly play with the same structures, uh, you can't include an external structure from an ASM in C++ or vice versa. It doesn't work like procedures, we could just include one in the other and then say it was external and, you know, call away and everything was happy. But you can't do that with structures. Uh, so, the first thing that you've got to do is uh, use pragma to ensure that the uh, structure definitions in C++ and the structure definition in assembly is exactly the same, or that they're packing the data exactly the same. And once you've ensured that C++ is packing the data exactly the same as assembly, uh, you can pretend that the two structures defined in the ASM and the C++ are actually the same thing. Uh, if the data is not packed the same, yeah, we get lots and lots of trouble. 
It just doesn't work, quite, quite frankly. Uh, okay, usually. Usually it's better to put structured definitions in an ink file. Yeah, we've not really looked at this, but you don't have to use... <laughs> You don't have to use a single assembly file. Uh, you can put in as many as you want. So, uh, ink file or include file is for assembly exactly the same as a header file is in uh, C++. And uh, we, yeah, we'll, we'll go through how to how to add an ink file because it's a little weird. You've, you've got to make sure that you add a, a header file, but you call it dot ink. Uh, its contents won't be available, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you run into a few errors. It's a bit, it's a bit picky, but we'll, we'll do it at the end. Um, it's usually best to declare the, uh, structure definitions in an ink file, so that's what we'll do. Uh, in the name box, it's best, what in the world? Yeah, we'll, we'll do that, we'll do that. At the top, wherever you like, blah, 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 blah. Who wrote this? This way you can define the structure. In yeah, whatever. Uh, structures of stru <laughs> structures of structures. Okay, this is quite cool actually. If you want to include um, another structure as the uh, elements inside some structure, so here we've got um, a point structure, just uh, got an x and y coordinate, and a box structure right, straight underneath that, which is made up of two point structures. Uh, this is what you do. Uh, pretty pretty basic really. The uh, p1 is a point. And then you give it the initializers. So right here I've said that P1 and P2 both use their default values, which is uh, 0, as per the uh, point structure above. And yeah, that's how you use structures of structures. Um, to reference one of the X or Y coordinates of our box structure, pretending there's a pointer in RCX that is, uh, we'd say mov RCX dot box dot P1 dot X. So you've got to say um, rcx.box to say that rcx is pointing to a box structure, then .p1 to say which uh, element of the box you want to reference, and then .x to say which element of the element of the box you want to reference. So that's the x just here of p1. Or you could say uh, rcx.box.p2.x, and that would be um, point p2. Uh, P2's X value. Yeah, it's hard to describe, but it's pretty easy. I'm pretty sure that makes sense. Oh, and then I... <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, to set the initial values uh, of an instance of box in our data segment declarations, you need to nest the curly braces. See, so because box is a... Um, Mesa type, or it's a it's a type made up of smaller types, so you've got to nest the curly braces, and this is how you do it just here. Um, the first set of curly braces inside the larger set is um, gonna set the default values for P1. So here we're overriding the two zeros for um, P1, and we're setting them to one and two for X and Y respectively. And the next set of nested curly braces, three and four, well that's gonna set the values for X and Y for P2 of our box structure called large box. Yeah, instance of box structure called large box. Anyway. Okay, so let's code an example. Next tutorial, ah, uh, this, I can't, mm. next tutorial we're going to unceremoniously disrobe classes and have a look under the hood at exactly what object-oriented C++ programming is really doing. But for now, uh, we've got a little example to code up. Um, yeah, on the stuff that we just went through. So I'm just going to make a little, a basic little structure in um, C++ and assembly and use an include file and see if we can get them all to play along. Okay, well I'm going to call this structure and then I'm going to type a number after it because I'm not sure how many of these I've made. Anyway, the first thing that we'll do is uh, add our C++ file this is just going to calculate the distance between um, a couple of point structures. Pretty basic stuff, really, but uh, I think it's going to be a, a good example. Um, what am I doing? Main. Main. Okay, so this is going to need IO stream, just in case we've got to print something out, using namespace std. Uh, okay, so our structure is going to be struct. 
Uh, we're going to call it point. Okay, so we're going to calculate the difference between two points, and uh, each point is going to have uh, doubles, x and y, as their coordinates. And we're going to do it with a function in an assembly called calculate distance, I guess. I'm going to say point star p1, point star p2, just like that, and into main, and return zero. Uh, okay, so we might just make, actually, uh, yeah, we might just make a few points here. I'll do the pragma thing in a second, but um, point p1, point p2, p1 dot x equals you know, some value, p2 dot x, oops, p1 dot y, I should have done first, it's the same number. Okay, so our program's going to calculate the distance between those two points. Uh, I do want to mention that for some reason, um, the ink files, we're just about to add an ink file, uh, Visual Studio doesn't seem to um, update them and link them and build them properly. It just it kind of builds them whenever it feels like it. I don't know why, but uh, it's pretty annoying. Anyway, if there's mistakes and that happens, then um, I'll just pause the video and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Good spelling. Distance. Okay, you make the distance. P1, P2, and off. And you C in. No, we'll just stop. Uh, okay, so we've got to actually pass these by reference, otherwise C is going to copy them to the stack, which is completely pointless since we'll have um, yeah, X and Y in stupid places that we don't want them. RCX and RDX. Okay. Um, pragma. So this is where we set up the um, packing of the elements so that this structure and the one that we're about to define in assembly agree. And uh, and nothing, that's what we're doing. So push one. Uh, pack and always put a semicolon there. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much our C++ program. Pretty basic really. It just sets up a, a little point structure and you know we've got our regular definition just here and we've got our main function that declares a couple of points then passes them straight to assembly which we're going to do right now first up um, better change my project to 64 bits and include massum as a build customization there it is okay. Six. Okay, so I just tried to build and it tells me that it can't find kernel32.lib. Now, I didn't realize, but back when I did those first tutorials, um, not everybody has kernel30, or not everybody has the um, Windows SDK, in SDK installed, so yeah, after you've installed the Windows SDK and you're using Visual Studio 2010 Express, uh, if you've changed it to 64 bits, you've still got to tell the linker where kernel32.lib is for 64 bits. Um, so if you go down here to linker and to additional library directories, and you click edit, and you click on the new folder, then dot dot dot. Um, let's see, so mine, or, or the place where I installed the um, Windows 7 SDK was uh, C drive, program files, uh, Microsoft SDKs, Windows version, whatever that is. I've got version 7.1 on here. You might have something different. But, uh, lib, and then x64. And then once we're in there, that x64 folder, we click select folder, OK, and apply. OK, so I probably should have done that about 40 tutorials ago, <laughs> but there's a you know, better late than never. Okay, that's good. So I can't find the calculate distance function, which makes sense since we haven't we haven't um, declared it. 
Alrighty, so now we're going to add an ink file. If we right click on our project and we go add new item, and this time we select the header, um, but down here we'll call it maybe um, point structure ink. Make sure that you put the dot inc there dot ink to say that it's a uh, assembly header. And here we're going to define um, the structure for assembly. Exactly the same structure as the C++ version, only uh, in assembly. Point struct or point structure. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't actually have to have the same name, but we're going to call it the same thing here. Uh, real eight, we might set that to zero point zero. Why not? Real nine, zero point zero. Point and S. And save that. Okay, so that's about all we need to do, really, in the uh, point structure dot ink file. Just define exactly this. And assembly and C plus plus are going to pack them the same. Uh, now we'll add our uh, assembly file, which is going to have that uh, function that we mentioned in our C plus plus file. Uh, and that's about it. So that's that. actually, the first thing we've got to do is include uh, point structure. Point structure dot ink. Put that at the top of your file. It doesn't have to be in any segments or anything. We're actually not going to have anything in our data segment here, but uh, yeah, the include can be below the data segment or, or wherever really. Um, okay, so what were we saying before? It was a, a function over here. Calculate distance. Calculate distance. Alrighty, it's a proc. Rats after a little while. End. Uh, the ink file didn't even need an end either. It just, yeah. Just for defining the uh, point function. Um, okay, so what are we what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing here? Let me see. Uh, RCX equals uh, to P1, and what do we have else? Um, DX equals P2. Okay, so we're just going to calculate the Euclidean distance. So that's the um, that that Pythagoras thing. A squared equals B squared plus uh, C squared. Uh, RCX. Um, okay, so I've, I'm using the um, SSE scalar SSEs here, so MOV scalar double um, P1s X into XMMO, and we want another one of these, only this is um, into XMM1, and it's Y. Uh, Yep, why? Uh, sub SD, I'm oh, sorry, sub SD, X and then O, and a DX, oops, dot, point, dot X. So we're subtracting from P1's X, uh, P2's X, and we're going to do the same thing with uh, Y, uh, yeah, Y. And then we can we can uh, square them. Add them together. S D X M M I X M one and return the square root. Um, okay, so that's that old. Uh, Yeah, distance trick. You get the distance between the two x's and you square that and you add that to the square of the distance between the two y's then you get the square root and you return that. So this is going to give us the, um, the distance. I think I have forgotten something though. We'll see if it runs. Okay, no. Mold SD. It doesn't understand what y is. Let's see, let's see. Syntax error. No. no, that's not a syntax error. Oh, real nine is. <laughs> oh gosh, there's nine bits in. 
to open. No, I didn't spell that right either. Anyway, let's see what we got. 3026.42 is the distance between those two points. Okay, that's really cool. Let me just put a T in here. And uh, something else that we should have done up here at our struct point is uh, make sure that all of the instances of point are aligned to 16 bits because we're using SSE. Now, in that particular example, it didn't matter because we were using um, SSE scalar instructions. But in just a second, we're going to cheat a bit and uh, we better align things first. Vertical spec aligned 16. Okay, so every instance of um, our point defined in C++ is going to be aligned to 16 bytes, which is exactly what we want for SSE, because if we come over here, um, we're doing this in a silly way, since we actually know that um, the X and the Y just here, in memory, are right beside each other, exactly the way that SSE likes them. So we can actually speed this up quite a lot. Now that they're aligned, we could do something like... Now this is this is cheating actually, and you, normally you wouldn't do this. But um, we can do something like... Mob APD, pack doubles, XMMO, and XMMO PCR. Okay. Sub PD. Uh, okay, so we moved the P1, both of those doubles, into XNMO, then we subtract uh, P2 from that. So we're just doing these same steps here, but we're doing both of them once, pretty much. And uh, H add, this is actually, uh, no, that was too... First we've got to multiply them together. Then now uh, this is a horizontal add down here. I think we haven't really gone through this, but probably folks have already seen it anyway. So this is going to add um, the top word in XMMO to the bottom word in XMMO. And then of course we've got a square root uh, PD. And we'll give that a save. And that should do exactly the same thing, only quicker. Twice the speed, pretty much. Three one seven nine point eight six. I don't know if that's the same answer or not. Let me just go back and see. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, so add SD. That should be one, just so in our original uh, formula. Yeah, now they give us the same answer. So the the other version, the SSE version, where we're doing them uh, SIMD style, was better from the start. Didn't have that stupid bug. Anyway, there's a way to. Um, Use structures. Use a basic structure in uh, assembly and C++. Now, yeah, I hope that wasn't too confusing. I hope that wasn't too much. Uh, I was trying to show something basic, but I'm uh, a bit excited. Anyway, that's uh, that's structures. So uh, thanks for listening. See you later.